Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. We have tagged this conversation with a mentor. And the topic we'll be looking at today is from data collection to data insights, how to build an effective HR framework. From data collection to data insights, how to build an effective HR reporting framework. My name is Olu Emi Adioshun, and I'll be anchoring today's conversation and teaching session. As always, we would like us to please feel free to make this session as engaging and as interactive as possible. At some point, we'll also allow participants who would like to share their experience or examples to help reinforce the knowledge and the teaching of tonight as soon as possible. Also, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box. At some point, we'll also be able to allow people ask their questions verbally. Let me just say that um, I decided to do this particular webinar with this particular topic because in a space, in a space of like um, five weeks, three people independently of each other, independently of each other, reached out to me to either say, oh, help me look at my my report my weekly report or my monthly report is it adequate some even said oh share with me a template for reporting of course i tried to assist as much as i could but i felt okay let's invest and commit to a larger time frame and do a more exhaustive and elaborative session so that other people too can share their insights. Of course, the outcome of today's session is to help us think in a holistic and robust manner so that we can be able to deliver outstanding results. Okay, my first question for tonight, please, I need you to be dead honest. Do you like doing reports? And this is, well, let's have three options for tonight. Yes, no, Sometimes, do you really like doing reports? I just want to get something quickly in the chat box. Do you like doing reports? So there are three options, yes, no, sometimes. I know that some of us, we, we sometimes are in a mood to do reports and there are other times we are not in a mood to, to do reports. So I'm already getting honest feedback, swift feedback, thank you so much to everyone. I even appreciate the fact that some people, they are no, it's not just N-O, it is N with multiple O's. All right, thank you so much, thank you so much. I appreciate all this feedback. So check the screen, the, check the chat box so that you can appreciate the different feedback that people are dropping. But again, I can just give a brief summary that is a mixed feeling. Some people like to do reports. Some people don't like to do reports, but quite a number of people, it's a sometimes type of thing, you know? Um, so we, we make progress, all right. So what would we attempt to look at tonight? Briefly, um, this is the table of contents. What is HR reporting? Because I also need us to understand it, okay? Uh, what is the purpose of HR reporting? Why do HR, human resource practitioners or professionals struggle with HR reporting or with reporting? Okay, we we'll also look at some HR reporting metrics, emphasis on some, okay? We we'll also look at qualitative and quantitative reporting, tips for effective reporting writing. Then I will also share some HR reporting samples, emphasis on samples, because they may be relevant only to certain contexts and then we'll go to question and answer and also experience sharing. You may want to reach out to one or two people on your team, your colleagues, your friends, associates to join this particular session as it will be very helpful. Now, what is HR reporting? Now, one of the things that I appreciate, you know, interacting with some of our, some other professionals in, other fields, let me give you an example, maybe our colleagues in audits, 
you know, typically when they come to audit you, they will tell you that, oh, this audit is according to COFO framework. This audit is according to this framework. This audit is according to that framework. Sometimes in HR, we may not necessarily have like a universal framework to provide guidelines on certain activities that we do. So it's dependent largely on experience, exposure, industry, personality, management, but so that we can have some reference points. I, I did some research to say, okay, can I even get frameworks that attempt to provide guidance to reporting? I saw quite a number, but I think this particular one, one is universal, is something we can reference and relate to. ISO, 3004, ISO 30414, okay, as guidelines for human capital reporting. ISO is International Standard Organization, all right, and it comprises of almost all the nations in the world with relevant experts and professionals. So you can't fault an ISO statement or an ISO recommendation, fault it at your own peril. Now, they define HR reporting as a formal engagement strategy. So a report is actually a strategy, an engagement strategy, okay, to support the proactive, look at that, proactive involvement of employees to consistently address the needs of external and internal customers that aligns activities related to leadership, training, engagement assessment, communications, learning, innovation, collaboration, rewards, recognition, analytics, and feedback. Sincerely, we can do a one hour session on this definition alone. It is very deep, it is very insightful, it is compact. But let's look at a, a few words just for emphasis and highlight purpose. Formal engagement strategy. So anytime you are doing a report, think about it as a strategy. In other words, don't trivialize it because nobody trivializes strategy. Again, it supports what? Proactive involvement. Ask yourself, does this your report, does it have some proactive elements? Very important, okay? And look at this other word, consistently addressing the needs. So which means your report must be addressing needs. The needs of who? Your stakeholders. And I'm delighted to let you know that the stakeholders of HR is not just the employees. Because sometimes a few of us are too focused only on our employees. Look at this, external and internal customers. So think of anybody that directly or indirectly impacts on the business or that the business impacts on, they are your stakeholders. For example, the board, the management, the, the regulator, the customer, the clients, the consumer, the vendor. I hope from this definition alone, you can begin to see how you will rethink your reports. Because even if you just ask yourself this question that, who are my stakeholders? Internal, you identify them. External, you identify them. What in my report speaks to all this caliber of people? You will see that you will hardly be able to just do a half page anymore. Of course, it's not necessarily a function of volume, but you won't be able to say, ah, what am I going to report this week or this month or this quarter or this year? Now, look at the various things that you are reporting on leadership, training, engagement assessment, communications, learning, innovation, collaboration, rewards and recognition, analytics, and feedback. I would just like to ask quickly, in one sentence or in one phrase, I, I don't want to say in one paragraph, in the chat box, tell me, what do you think about this definition? 
And let me also ask a follow-up question. You know, for those of us that went to school, you know, when they ask you a question, one, one question, it will have one A and one B, or Roman figure one and Roman figure two. Does your current report or your immediate recent or past report, would you say, if you judge your report by this definition from an holistic perspective, how would you rate your report over 100? 100, 100? 90 over 100? 80 over 100? 60 over 100? I will need us to assimilate. I need us to, to, to reflect. I'm almost wishing this was a physical class so that I could be seeing our faces right now, okay? Just the report you submitted maybe for first quarter or for last week, would you say, and I would like to get some feedback in, in the chat box. This is a, a workshop. Let's put it. Thank you so much, my brother. I like that. Someone here says he will rate his report 60 over 100. I need to get some feedback. Okay, I need to really, really get some feedback. Someone also says, don't worry, I won't mention your name. Okay, someone says 50 over 100. Okay, somebody says 85. Fantastic. The person that got 85, you must share some examples with us tonight. Okay, I'm not putting you on this spot, but voluntarily. Somebody says 40 over 100. Okay, let's let's keep the thought coming. Okay, let's let's make progress. It also shows we are all in the right class. Okay, so that even from the definition alone, we can already gain something, and we can already see one or two things we will begin to to adjust. Now we we'll look at a few other definitions and concepts. What is HR reporting? Yes, we've looked at a general definition. HR reporting involves and includes data collection. Okay, you must have data because you are not just reporting randomly. You must have facts. You must have information. Okay, data collection. HR reporting is the process of collecting data and converting it into valuable insights for HR leaders, business leaders, management and organizational leaders, stakeholders. Next, HR reporting must involve some form of analysis. HR reporting must involve some form of manipulation. So it's not just that you get raw data and you just project it as it were. There may be instances where you project some, but there are some, even when you are projecting it, you need to manipulate it. You need to analyze it. You need to tease out, are there trends? Are there revelations, insights that are emanating from this reporting? Don't just drop a number without explaining it. Don't just drop an information without trying to say, this could be possible reasons and this could be possible mitigating factors if it is a challenge, if it's an opportunity, this could be possible next steps. The, the process requires careful data analysis using quantitative or qualitative or quantitative and quan, qu quantitative measures and turning these findings into what? Actionable items. Don't let your report, you know, sometimes when we say reporter, now let's imagine a news reporter now. They just give you information. No, HR reporting is not like news reporting that just says, oh, there has been a fire outbreak somewhere. No, there must be actionable points from HR and possibly from other relevant stakeholders. Third, okay, data interpretation. Okay, HR reporting involves interpreting this data in meaningful ways such as spotting trends or areas for improvement. Note, we didn't say in complex ways. We said meaningful ways. Some people think until something is complex and complicated, that can be insightful. Sometimes simplicity can communicate the best type of information, solution, and advancement. If it needs to be complicated, maybe, why not? But make it as simple, think about the least educated or least technical person from the people who will get lay hands on the report, who will review your report, and who will take action based on your report. Don't speak above the head of the majority of the people. 
Now, one of uh, of my mentors late now, uh, Miles Muro used to say that when the abuse, uh, when uh, the purpose of something is not known, abuse is inevitable. And I align with that. When you don't know the purpose of something, you will abuse it. For example, some people do reports or ask for reports as a means of punishing. Some people ask for reports as a means of routine. They just know that we used to ask for reports. And they too, they are now our guys at the top. They are asking for reports. Or the our guys are asking them for reports. It's important to know some of the reasons or purpose of HR reporting. HR reporting, for example, can help with measuring performance. You know, um, it's not until you are doing your NPR, monthly performance review, or you are doing your, what do you call it now, um, QPR, quarterly performance review, or biannual review, that performance management or measurement is ongoing. Every report, irrespective of the type of report, encapsulates results, encapsulates outcome, encapsulate progress or shortages or deficiencies. So HR reports are essential for measuring employee performance, future important key performance indicators, and help guide business decision. HR, another purpose of HR reporting is monitoring engagement. HR reports can also help monitor employee engagement, satisfaction levels and in indicating potential areas for, 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 for improvement. For example, something as simple as reporting that maybe there is an increase in, in lateness that may signify a decline in employee engagement and motivation. I use the word may. You need to drill down to find out exactly what and what are the root causes. It may be because they've just started repairing Third Milan Beach for those of us in Lagos. Okay, but you need to do that. And then you may need to say, do we need to review our resumption time? So you are not just reporting for reporting sake. HR reporting, one of the purposes is also sometimes to promote diversity. HR reports can help promote diversity and inclusion by identifying how minority groups are represented in the organizational workforce. Overall, HR reports are valuable tools for what? Gaining insights into how organizations HR function. Patience, Lawa, please mute your mic. Thank you. Overall, HR reports are valuable tools for gaining insights into how an organization's HR function operates and how they can drive the organization's overall goals. Please follow me. Why is HR reporting? Why is it important? Why is it important? One, to make the contribution of human capital to the organization more transparent. This is very important. You know, sometimes, you know, they will say the more you look, the less you see. Sometimes people ask, what is HR doing itself? We are sweating. We are, we are, traveling, yet if you ask the average, maybe CEO or CFO or any other C-suite, some of them, not all of them, may struggle with what we are doing. Sometimes it may be a reflection of our reporting, the quality of the reporting or under-reporting in some instances. HR reporting is important to make the contribution of human capital to the organization more transparent. HR reporting helps the organization to understand the importance of purpose of investment in the workforce. Each time we pay salary is an investment in the workforce. Each time we do training is an investment in the workforce. Each time we do TGIF is an investment in the workforce. Anybody investing must be getting periodic reports on the impact and outcomes of those investments. HR reporting is important because it helps us to improve what productivity and performance. What are we doing well that we need to reinforce? Where are we not doing well that we need to mitigate against? HR reporting helps to measure the financial 
and the non-financial returns generated from investments in human capital. HR reporting is what? Very important. Now, who are the users of HR reports? You know, earlier in the definition, according to ISO, we saw that HR reporting affects both internal and external customers. Critical users of HR reports include executives. They use HR reports to help guide decision making and track progress towards company goals. Even HR report is used for we HR as a department, as a function, as a strategic business unit on our own. HR professionals use HR report to monitor trend, identify areas for improvement, and evaluate employee work performance. HR report can also be very useful even for employees. Employees use HR report to track their own progress, understand the company policies, and learn about career development opportunities. And then clients. Clients can use HR reports in order to evaluate the performance of the organization and make informed decisions about potential partnership. Way back, I remember when I was working with a particular organization, I won't mention their name for privacy purposes, and a foreign firm, a foreign firm was trying to was considering seriously investing, buying stock in that company. You know what they did? They hired one of the top four consulting firms in Nigeria to come and do like a due diligence. So part of the due diligence was, for example, they didn't, of course they were speaking with finance, but I was delighted and excited that they were also engaging HR asking for the kind of report we submit, going through the report, checking, analyzing the report, and so on and so forth. For me, it was fascinating back then that an organization is that is interested in potentially investing was asking critical information about HR and what the HR department is doing, the kind of report, and checking the report to help them make a decision so they were not just asking for what is the revenue, what is the cost, which are valuable questions to, to ask, but they were also asking for different type of HR reports, which was part of what influenced their decision to invest in that organization at that point. Why do HR, why do we, why do our colleagues, why do I struggle with reporting? It's important to know, very important, because if you know why, it will be helpful in mitigating and working around it. The first reason, in my own experience, why some of us struggle with HR reporting is that in the very first instance, some of us do not have a work plan. In other words, you didn't have a plan to say, this is my plan or my department or my unit plan or my function plan for the year, for the quarter, for the month, for the week, for the day. You see, if you are able to conceptualize your work plan upfront, by default, okay, what to report will almost be consequential of what you plan to do. I agree, there will obviously be periods where you will need to do things you didn't plan to do and or do more than you plan to do, but that will only enrich your reports, not take away. So once you have a work plan, a mirror of that work plan becomes what? It becomes by default HR report. Again, look at let, let's mirror our colleagues in audit. I'm using them as case study today. You will see that they will typically have audit plan for the year, for the quarter. That doesn't mean that there may not be some impromptu audit, or maybe when there are signals or suspicion around certain activities, they may do some flash audits, but they have an audit plan. And therefore, they also have audit reports. You can see how I'm trying to draw an analogy from a sister department. No to-do list. Sometimes 
on a day-to-day -day basis or week-to-week -week basis or month-on-month -month basis, we don't have a plan. We don't have a schedule. Once you don't have that, I put it to you, you will struggle to come up with a report at the end of the period. This one may be funny to some of us. Some of us, sometimes, we don't have documentation. We do a lot of work, but there's no documentation. I can mention one or two randomly that comes to my mind, especially for our colleagues that work in fairly large, high staff number organization. Do you know that sometimes the amount of time we spend in quotes, counseling, coaching, listening to employees, do you know that it can sometimes be massive? I remember a period in my life when I was the head of employee relations. I could spend as much as two hours in a day on phone, face-to-face, -face, virtual, engaging with staff. In some instances, some instances, engaging with relatives of staff. But guess what? Do you know that you can have a 15 minute call and then there's no documentation? So you don't record something to say, I had this conversation with so so and so. This was the focus of the conversation. This was the information I provided. This was the solution. And then you document it. That's why I said, if you operate in a system where you fill time sheets and you need to account for every hour, every 30 minutes, every minute, you will be able to see what you have done for the day and how they are valuable to the organization and how they advance organizational interest and productivity. Another reason why some HR struggle with reporting is that they don't even have a clear scope of work. In some instances, they trivialize what they do. Men and brethren, I've seen this a lot. You know, maybe because we've done it so many times, we now don't think it is work or we don't think it is important. There is a lot of things we do that is important and we should not trivialize. Okay, we begin to consciously magnify what we do. I'm not saying we should exaggerate, but we should not treat it as unimportant. Okay, sometimes too, some people have challenges with estimation. Some of us, sometimes, we don't have a full view and appreciation for the complete spectrum of the HR value chain. Why should any HR struggle with reporting? Let's just mention some items quickly. I feel I've been talking alone for a while. So quickly, thank you so much, Blessing Joshua, for, for your message, I, I like that. Now, so that we can have a few, please drop in the chat box any element of HR value chain that you know. I, I want us to do it together as a group, quickly in the chat box, drop any elements of the HR value chain that you know. You will see at the end of the day, hopefully enough people cooperate with me on this particular task. You will see that if all these are in our value chain, why should we struggle to put out what we have done? Okay, I can see, thank you so much, uh, Ismail, um, onboarding. Thank you so much, um, Ade Korede recruitment. No, yeah, thank you so much, performance management. Um, Leticia, thank you so much, employee relations. My sister, Monisola, L and D. All about it, thank you so much, HR audit. Chidima, God bless you. This puts resolution, fantastic. Odume, we thank you, thank you, thank you, succession planning. Okay, at the exit management. Again, Leticia, the second time, HR analytics. My brother and friend, Adereji Adereli, background checks. Let's keep it coming. Okay, Iobami. Business partnering. Oh, I, could it, I, did, I, could it, I love that. Termination is part of what we do. Exactly. Daily payroll management. I'm only going to call unique things. So if I don't call you, don't, don't be um, pissed off and don't ignore me in subsequent calls. Subsequent. You can see, you can see all the things we do in our value chain. Now, if you pick one value chain, so let's pick one now. Let's say we pick just recruitment. 
Do you know that with oh, Onisola, top knuckle, top knuckle, strategy is a very important part of all, what we do. Oh, let's see again. Promotion, fantastic. Employee engagement, fantastic. Oh, all I am, thank you. Welfare management, Chidima again. Policy management, fantastic. Um, are they conflict and disciplinary engagement? Oh, I like what Anthony put here, shared services. Can, can you see? Oh, Gabriel again, survey analysis. Exactly, it's one thing to do this, administer a survey. It's another thing to analyze the survey. So how can you have all these line items in the plus more in the HR value chain and you will struggle to have a report to put together for either a week or for a month. Look at all the things you could have done. You could have done. And in many instances, we actually play in some of this field, but in some instances, we trivialize it and under report or don't report or suppress the information by, by ourselves. Thinking is a normal thing. Onboarding is not normal. It's a special activity that can determine the overall employee retention and engagement, that can determine the, how a new staff can hit the ground running. Another reason, thank you so much for your contributions. You can keep it coming. Why some of us in HR struggle with reporting is that we don't, we are not aware, or in some instances, we are aware, but we are not conscious. You know, it's one thing to be aware, it's another thing to be conscious. Being aware means if I say, what are your organizational objectives? You can just mention it to me. Or oh, increase revenue by 20%, increase um, output by 5%, increase market share by 21%. You know the objective offhand. You can read them out. But being conscious now means that day to day, week to week, month on month, anything you are doing, you are before, even from conceptualization of task to do, you are saying that, okay, what I want to do now is to focus on revenue generation. So I now want to recruit to increase our revenue. You can see that when you place the organizational objective on the front burner, when you are reporting the recruitment, you are not just going to make it look like you hired a driver. A driver will not just be just a driver. You will notice that without that driver, your logistic value chain will suffer. Without that logistic value chain, you will not be able to move products from the warehouse to the far north. So even when you are reporting that you hired a driver, but the way you will link it with logistics and customer satisfaction is not going to look what ordinary. Again, some people struggle with reporting because poor communication. Sometimes some people can articulate what they do. If you discuss or engage with some people and you see the report they put together, you say, no, 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 no. You are doing a disservice to yourself. Look at all these things you have done. Yet your report does not mirror 50% of what you have done. I know some of us, of course, all of us, almost all of us here, and directly in HR, you must have interviewed candidates. And after a while, you look at the candidates again, and then you look at their CV. And you will say to the candidates that this CV is a complete disservice to your professional experience. Can anybody on this chat just say, yes, you have met that kind of candidate before? That after you a rigorous interview session, engagement conversation with a candidate, you are like, wow, this candidate CV is a poor reflection of that. I know some people oversell themselves, you know, the CV is an over, over hype. Maybe they even gave a consultant to write into us packaging. But the truth is, way more people actually undersell themselves in their CV than the other way around. Thank you so much, my, my, my brothers. Thank you so much, my colleagues, okay, for validating that. So some people struggle with articulating what they have done and how they have done what they have done. Now, if you have one of these problems, you need to overcome it. If you have two, you need to overcome it. But imagine, I have here listed at least seven problems. Imagine you have all the seven. Now, in the chat box, if you don't mind, 
if there are any problem that you also know or you feel can also contribute to why we HR professionals, why some of us sometimes struggle with reporting, we kind enough to put it on in the chat box. Okay, if you know any reason that I have not covered on this slide right now, that you think may be one of the reasons or contributory factor to why some of us sometimes struggle with reporting, please drop it in the chat box. Okay, so what do we need to do as HR? Okay, okay. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I can see those feedbacks and contributions coming. Thank you, Billy. Thank you so much, um, Noye. All right, Noye says we are sometimes carried away with the grammar instead of stating the numbers. Thank you so much, uh, Gideon. Sometimes it's lack of confidence. We, we are so bothered about what others will think or say about what we want to report and then decide to suppress it. Billy says sometimes lack of management support or, or, or feedback. Oh, God bless you so much, my brother Adedeji. He says, not embracing IT tools that can simplify the report. Very critical, very germane, very fundamental. And Gabriel says, my brother says, giving attention to non-urgent and probably non-important um, activities. Fantastic. Let's, let's keep those things coming. Okay, what do we need to do as HR? We need to demonstrate the high understanding of how our business makes money how we spend money, how we make money. We need to demonstrate understanding of what the business needs to do in order to grow. As HR, we need to take the key lead in driving strategy work, formulation and implementation. We are first a business person before we are an HR person. We are only HR to use HR strategies HR techniques, HR approach, HR concepts to drive business objective achievement and realization. Okay, I'm seeing additional information, so I will, I will, I will look at them. Thank you so much, Ade. Poor understanding of data analytics and poor skills in, in Excel. Yes, uh, Darren says poor presentation and ignorance about tools to utilize. Fantastic, fantastic. Let me see, um, Tiwalade says, at times we get so busy that the, at the end of the day, we look at the time and it is past closing time and hence we postpone the report, okay, to the next day. And then you do the same the next day and the cycle continues. So when it is now time for you to submit the report, you are now trying to rack your brain on Friday or a month and, ah, what did we do this month? Oh. So let me give you a hack. What I do personally, the last thing I do every day before I leave the office, emphasis on leave the office, I don't postpone it too because many times I get home and continue to work. Before I leave my, I have a daily to-do list and I have a daily achievement list. I populate it. So if I need to do a weekly report or a monthly report, I extract it from my daily to-do and daily accomplishment list. I go, don't forget anything. I can't forget. Why? Not because I have a photogenic memory. It's because I write things, things down. Okay, the shortest pencil is better than what? The best memory. And that's why documentation is fundamental, is, is jamming. Okay, so we we'll look at a few HR uh, reporting uh, metrics, a few. So I'll just show you some, okay? Um, strategic management. You can look at break-even points. Now, some of these concepts sounds like accounting, but if you look at it, they are just simple analysis. Yes, accountants have embraced a lot of these things, but it doesn't mean it is strictly purely for accounting. Break-even points, okay? The point when cost invested in developing or improving an HR program, okay, is equal or greater than the returns, okay? So when you spend money on a training, break-even is the point when the organization has recouped at least up to the amount that was spent on that training. That's break-even. Cost-benefit ratio. How the benefit of a program or activity 
relates to the cost associated with developing it. So anytime we are doing something in HR that has cost implication, we must think through the benefit and also highlight the benefit. Just like the cost typically will jump at management or the board, the benefits must also jump at them. And as much as possible, can we monetize the benefits even after we have listed it? Return on investment. The return of a company's monetary investment in a new program or activity. HR expense to revenue ratio, okay? HR to employee ratio. HR expense to operating expense ratio. So when you look at your total expenditure, <coughs> excuse me, in the organization, how much is H direct HR cost? What's the ratio? Okay, these are just some examples to um, you know, trigger our imagination, all right? Again, let's look at some other HR reporting metrics. You can look at workforce planning and staffing, okay? Time to start, time to, to hire. You can look at turnover rates, rate at which people are exiting, and you can even further break it down um, at different levels, gender level, grade level, um, departmental level, geographic level, uh, age uh, demography levels. So you, you can take something and blow it up. You can look at uh, what's the cost of turnover? What is the cost per turnover? What is the cost per hire? Okay, what you can also look at things around our uh, promotion, relative um, internal promotion and ex external pro pro uh, promotion, um, internal promotion, for example. How many vacancies are in the organization that when you are filling it, you are able to fill them from within without going outside to hire people? Okay, we'll look at some other ones talent management, competency rates, degree to which employees in key positions have the competency required to achieve the performance objective, okay? Um, average training spent, the monetary investments in training, you know, in an individual. Training participation rates, percentage of people who participate in company paid training. Again, let me take a breather here and say that sometimes when we do internal trainings, when I say internal, you know, sometimes we call it maybe KSS, knowledge sharing session. We, we trivialize it. Just because the person that taught it is a member of staff and we did it in the conference room, we will now not report it. What if you had hired a facilitator, a resource person, and you were are, are given honorarium? What would have been the cost of it? How many people were trained? Don't say because it's an internal training, you will, for example, not do uh, what that thing we do at the end of training, like a survey or uh, feedback and evaluation. Don't trivialize. It's not until you go to other business school that you have gone training. Some of the best training some of us have attended in our life. It was our colleague that thought that, that did the training. No certificate for it. Of course, HR can also be strategy. Those cases, you the organization, as a, you can issue certificates. You know, some Nigerians are wired that if something is not certificated, they they trivialize it and they don't appreciate it. You can create certificate, get your MD to sign, and issue it. I've even worked in one or two places in the past that our inter organizational certificate, we took it to certain ag relevant agencies and partnered with them so that the certification was even carried more weight beyond and um, over the organization. You can report things around risk management. Are you with me? Risk management, w workers' compensation rates. Okay, our salaries, things around accidents, near miss. So some of us, we work in places where we have a functional HSC, health, safety, and environment. Okay, and so, for example, they may be reporting this, but that may not also stop you from reporting. Take things around medical. Do you know that sometimes if you work and liaise with your HMO, you can further break down how many people who are sick without mentioning the names of the people that were sick. What percentage of the sickness is due to malaria, for example? Analyze it. You will see insights and things you can do, okay? Employee practice claims, okay? This also speaks to medical. Okay, how many people had accidents? Not this maybe NSITF, 
all those kind of things, it workplace injury. Okay, so let's move on quickly. Tools for reporting. Okay, there are several tools that HR professionals can use to create and analyze reports, and these are some of them. And thankfully, some of my colleagues here, esteemed colleagues, friends, associates, have already mentioned some of them um, during the course of today's um, conversation. An HRIS, Human Resource Information System, can be very useful. Now, again, let me say this, sadly, that I know quite a number of people who have HRIS, if the organization has invested, yes, they don't use it to generate reports. I know one or two people can testify to what I'm saying on this call. The reporting functionality on the HRIS, they either didn't activate it or they don't even go there at all. Let me say this quickly. Some of us in HR only generate reports when we are asked from above, and that should not be the case. And this is one of my hope and aspiration for running this particular webinar, that you will be pushing reports. You know what, when I say push, push means they didn't ask you. You will be the one to push. You will not let reporting be a pull action. A pull action is when your MD asks you that, oh, give me a report on this, this, this. On your own, push reports to, people, to, to the management to say, oh, training report, attrition report. You can even do the report that there'll be different reports. You can do some reports that they'll be consolidated. I know sometimes why we are afraid of doing some of these reports, because when we do it, we become more transparent. And then once we started pushing, they will now begin to pull for it. So for example, if this month you do certain reports, by next month, they will now ask you for it. They will forget that you are the one that initiated, that self-prompted yourself to begin to what? To push out the report. But don't be afraid of transparency. We are just showcasing the value that we are adding to the business value chain. HR is very important. Another tool is what we call business intelligence tools. Now, there's one popular business intelligence tool. They, they call it what? Power BI. There are other types, but Power BI, um, I, um, if I'm not mistaken here, I'm sure, um, is being run or managed by Microsoft. So depending on the Microsoft suits that you bought, so some organization paid for almost everything, but some organization may have limited subscription to Power BI, for example, and maybe a few members of staff have it. If you're in HR, find out from your IT if you have Power BI at all. If you have, ask to be given access to it. Like where I worked the last time, I asked for Power BI. Why will you give only finance Power BI? Why will you only give them? Um, we used to have one department that was in charge of um, market intelligence. I said, no, me too. I'm an intelligence person. Sometimes, I, let me also quickly throw this out. Especially if you're in an organization where um, you have like more than five team members in HR. If you will get a sixth person, let that person be a business a, a business intelligence person. Let that person be an analyst, HR analyst. The person can be an Excel or analyst guru, and then you will be training that person in HR. Do you understand what I mean? Because you will unlock so much value. You will unlock so much insights, and you become even more endeared to the organization. Now, there's nobody that doesn't have this one. Worst case scenario, it will be pirated copy. At least all of us have Excel. And that is why, no matter how much we know Excel today, to endeavor to know it more. Let me also flip it. No matter how little of Excel you don't know today, please up your game. So go to my YouTube um, channel, Luyeme Adiosho. There is a session on Excel for, for, for HR. There are about one hour. Very, very insightful. You can watch it, post it, play it, rewind it. Okay, and we also have a session on um, data analysis and Excel in the first Saturday of, 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 uh, of May, just next Saturday. You can reach out to me if you are interested. All right, so Excel is a very powerful tool. Again, you can also collaborate with people who are exceptionally good with Excel in the organization. Now, this downside to that is, so you have HR information which may be confidential. So because you are not good in Excel, you're not going to call a colleague in finance who has Excel skills, and then will not tell you to share the data. So you can see why it may pay you to 
improve your own Excel capability so that your information can be with you and you will not you know, compromise on data privacy. Then online survey tools, okay? There are different types. Many of them, you can use them for free. Some you can use them for free up to a certain quantity or a certain usage level, okay? So you have things like SurveyMonkey, that is the free version and there's the paid version. That's something like um, what we call call tricks. This can be used to gather data from employees on topics such as employee engagement, job satisfaction, training needs, okay? This data can be analyzed and reported using other tools. So when you do employee survey, there must be reports out of it. When you do performance management, there must be a report out of it. When you do biannual appraisal, there must be a report out of it. There's, you see, let me make you laugh. When you do TGIF, there should be a report that should emanate from that TGIF. TGIF doesn't end in after party. The Monday after the TGIF, there should be a report to relevant stakeholders. How many people participated in the TGIF? What was the level of, 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 of engagement? What was the level of team bonding? Can you try to show that in the months you do TGIF, the level of collaboration and innovation grows by a certain percentage and tie it to the TGIF? We are not just resting. Yes, we are resting, but we are also rejuvenating so that we can what? We can become better. We can collaborate more. We, we can have more cross-functional engagement. Um, we can have less delay in getting responses to emails, to reports, to requests, and so on and so forth. I, I hope I, I'm communicating. I hope uh, you are getting some value. Thank you so much, my sister, Leticia. Leticia says, go go form. Okay? Hello, many of us have Gmail. Go go form. It's also free. You can use it. Hey, Billy, thank you so much. You, you know I needed a smile just right now. Okay? There are also HR reporting software. There are several software applications designed specifically for HR reporting, such as ADP reporting, Cognos analytics, SAP success factors. Okay, these tools offer a range of features, including customizable templates, real-time data, and advanced analytics capabilities. These are just examples. So if you are using an ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning tool today, check there will be somewhere that will be worth reporting. If you are using an ERP, you most likely have either internally or with the vendor, a support person. Next week, please schedule a meeting with the support person for the ERP. Tell the person that, come, come and show me, teach me or my team the reporting capabilities of this ERP. They will show you, they will be forced to teach you. They can even help you configure certain reports that what you just do every month is just click a button and in seconds or in a minute, the report will come out. Some of us, we are sitting on gold mines. We are not extracting the full value from what we are sitting on. It won't cost you any money. You already, some of us, we already have the ERP. We are just not, either not conscious of it or we are not placing a demand on it. So speak to your IT or speak to the vendor, ask for a meeting. Most of the time, when we are using all this ERP, we pay either annual support fee. Place a demand on your support fee. Guys, why do we do this among other things? HR professionals, where we are working today, we must shine, okay? We, we, we must become even more and more indispensable. We must become even more and more attractive. Look, where we are, everybody in this group, we must command higher salary and wages this year. Yes, we, and we must deserve it. And these are some of the tools and actions, that initiatives that will help us. People will fight for us and say, can you see what HR is doing? Okay, now let's look at some of the HR reporting. Okay, some of the HR reporting again. So you can have qualitative or, or quantitative. You know, so example of some qualitative, for example, an exit interview to a large extent is qualitative because you'll have questions like, oh, Uluyemi, why did you resign? Uh, 
What did you like about our compensation and benefits? Where we, did you have a good time with your line manager? Was it supportive? What do you think about our your colleagues? You know, those kind of things. Then typically too, when you do things around employee engagement survey re report, you know, it can also appear qualitative because why some of these things are qualitative is because they bother more around feeling, perception, okay? All right, things like diversity and inclusion, you know, when I say, oh, do you feel that management carries you along? Do you feel your line manager carry you along? You know, things like feeling, feeling, feeling. Sometimes it may be difficult to, to substantiate. Some elements of performance review can also be like that. It's, it's not all the KPIs that are completely codified into numbers and, and, and digits, okay? So qualitative HR reports are useful, okay, for providing more in-depth insight into HR data, particularly when it comes to what understanding employee attitude, opinions, and experiences. Again, when we talk about toxic workplaces, if you check it very well, it's, it's largely qualitative, okay? They can be particularly useful for identifying underlying issues or trends, okay, that may not be apparent from quantitative data alone. So sometimes you have quantitative data, but you now need to what, drill down using qualitative method, okay? In addition to qualitative HR reporting, you can also have quantitative HR reporting, okay? So things like your turnover reports, is quantitative why you typically use number you know you, you you are using a formula to say the number of people at the beginning of of the year or at the beginning of the period minus the number of people at the end of the period divided by the number of people at the beginning of the period there are different formulas okay depending on which approach you are using when you are talking about absenteeism for example say number available not available is almost by default in figures. So, of course, to a large extent, when you're talking about compensation and, and benefits, it's typically naira and copper or dollar, okay? Some training and development reports, some, not all. Some part of it can be extremely quantitative. And so one of the things we do in training and development reports, when you are doing like a evaluation form or feedback form, you will say on the scale of one to five, was the training, um, did the training pass new knowledge? One being the lowest, five being the highest. So even though you are asking a qualitative question, so to speak, the response is captured in a quantitative method. In other words, you are using numbers, okay? So quantitative HR reports are useful for providing objective numerical data that can be used to track progress and make data-driven decisions, okay? They can be particularly useful for identifying areas where the organization may need to improve, such as high turnover or absenteeism rates or areas where the organization is performing well, okay? Such as high levels of what? Employee engagement or low le level rates of disciplinary action. So you can say, oh, in the last three months, we've not issued a query to anybody, okay? Or we've not had to suspend anybody. So let's look at some tips for effective reporting, report writing, okay? Let's look at some tips. Um, first and foremost, let me say this um, without any fear of contradiction, that no report means no work done. There are one or two people listening to me right now where you work, you don't have to submit reports for one reason or the other. It will haunt you badly. One day will be what? One day. Maybe they are downsizing and they are trying to determine those that are working or not working. Just because you've not been submitting reports or you've been submitting shallow reports, they will treat it like you are not working. It will shock that person. But it won't shock you anymore because you have learned. And you now know that you can push reports on your own. You don't need to make reports a pool based, okay? No report may mean no work done. Four reports can mean poor work done. Are you paying attention? So you see, 
when you are, it's just that it will look funny when you say what are part of your activities for the week. So if you do a weekly report every week, part of your activity for the week is actually the action of writing that weekly report. It takes time. It's not a two minute exercise. It takes time, it takes thoughts, it takes knowing which of the things you are reporting to report first and then next and then thereafter. Sometimes you may have a good report and the flow of the report is the problem. The point that most impact affect the business is point 11. You now put trivial things in point one, two, three. The people reading it may never get to that point 11. Excellent report may also mean excellent work done. You know, we must improve in our packaging, in our public relations, in our propaganda. Take it or leave it. Um, let me use an example. Apologies to people um, who don't like football at all. But I'm sure football has sort of put themselves in our face that you will have a minimal appreciation. Look at the English Premier League today. Check it. It is not necessarily the best league in the world. But it is the league with the best public publicity, with the best public relations, with the best propaganda. The front is packaging. 50% of English Premier League is what? It's packaging, branding. See what they do today to English players. Almost all English players are overhyped and overpriced. Somebody said if JJ Okocha was an English player, he would have won World Player of the Year. And I believe why JJ Okocha had substance. It was just born and grew up from a part of the world that our packaging is what shallow. And that leads me to the next point. Pay attention to aesthetics. Guys, don't just do it. Do it with glamour. Do it with glitz. I tell people, if you want to be tall, be my height. Do you get the message? That's a joke, but I hope you got the, the feedback. Don't just do the report. You see, guys, we have, you see, one of the skill sets you must develop is your aesthetics capability, your PowerPoint. So pay attention. I think for those of you that joined this meeting today, look at the PowerPoint I'm doing. You will see intentionality in meeting this PowerPoint. It took me three months to prepare this slide that I'm presenting to you. And the three months is not just because I was thinking of the points to communicate but how to communicate it, the flow of the communication, how the slides should be like. You know, sometimes some people do slides, all the information we show at the same time. The patients to let it show one after the other, they don't have it. Meanwhile, we are speaking to one point, the audience is distracted and looking at point four. Pay attention. If there are instances where it may be in your interest. Maybe you have a friend that is what? That is super good in PowerPoint, for example, if that is the means by which you are submitted the report. You do your due diligence, get your report content, finish it, then you move it to that your friend, and then they help you do the final aesthetics. Again, the problem with that is, so imagine you are working in an organization and you have sensitive information, you now have to pass it to your friend in another organization, maybe due to carelessness or negligence, Somebody else sees an information they are not supposed to see. So that's why, to a large extent, within your team or by yourself, you need to develop this package. You know the way some of us wake up in the morning, we take our baths, and we take time to make up. And if you are not fine, you are not fine. But if you are fine, you just make up. Wow. So when you have content, and then you add packaging to the content, you have killed them. Are you with me? Okay. So aesthetics is what is important. Now, another thing, pay attention to details and data accuracy. I'll say that one more time. Pay attention to details and data accuracy. The good thing is there are many tools that can help us today. So for example, I, I'm saying this jokingly, but I mean it. Okay. I'm saying it jokingly, but I mean it. Nobody today in our generation, in this dispensation, should have problem with grammatical accuracy. When you have a tool like Grammarly, there's, there's a free version of Grammarly. After you have typed that memo, you can copy and paste in Grammarly, and it will edit it for you. 
in some organizations today, they've even embedded Grammarly into their MS Word application. Again, you can copy your information, put it in charge GPT, and it will reveal it for you. For maybe, um, if you, you can say, this particular memo of correspondence, okay, ensure it's put it in a formal tone. Make it um, positive, make it empathetic. So please pay attention to details and data accuracy. There's nothing that irritates leadership or managers or management more than you, you, your, your, your data are conflicting. So maybe you write something in, in words. So let's use an example, 422,000 Naira. Then in the figure, you now write 431,000 Naira. So there's a misalignment between the words and the figure. And what typically happens to people is what I call what copy and paste errors. Let me share a joke here. Back in the day, somebody was copying a colleague's uh, exam sheet. So they copy the metric number. Don't be like that person. Beware of copy and paste errors. Some of us, by default, when let's say they say do a disciplinary report, what you go and do by default is you duplicate the last or a recent disciplinary re report and you now begin to adjust the contents. Copy and modify, copy and edit, or generate the document afresh. Or when you run, finish running the document, before you submit, if you work in a team and the sensitivity, confidentiality is not high risk, get so somebody else to help you vet what you have done. There is no mail I send to all staff that I don't get one, two other people to read. This is, has nothing to do with pride. This has nothing to do with, oh, I have 22 years work of experience. You see, when you are the one that generates a content, it's easier for you not to see the error. Why? The content is in your mind. So when you are reading the email or the document, because it's in your mind, you'll be seeing it reflecting on the paper. Meanwhile, when you call someone who is very neutral to read it for you, they will just easily, effortlessly, pick out some of these um, errors, okay? Let's keep dropping our thoughts, our comments, and feeling the emojis and the emoticons. It is giving me vibes and the energy right here, okay? All right, now, another tip for effective report writing is that even from your job description, your JD, okay, or your KPI for the financial year, what are the kind of outputs that is expected from you? Check them out. Those, those KPIs, those job description, key, key result areas, will give you indicators on what and what you should what attempt to, to report on. Okay? Last but not the least, eh? design and create your own templates. I don't know how to say this because I love you guys. I don't want to sound disrespectful or condescending. You know, some of us, eh, this thing, eh, only let me give me templates. All about they give you templates. And yet, when I give you templates, there are two th things I do. Either I give you a template I created myself, or because I'm shy, I, I don't know how to say no to you. I will take a little of my time. I'll go and search Google for the template and give it to you, which you could have done by yourself. Are we together? The problem with templates is when templates, and please pay attention to me. So I'm not saying templates are useless or are not good, but the problem with templates is that most templates are templates from other templates. I'll say that again. I know what I'm saying right now may sound like tautology. Most templates are templates from templates. However, the first template which is the original template, was created based on a context. By the time the template has changed hands two, three, four times, the problem with the template in its current form is that the context that delivered, that gave back to the first template has changed. So maybe the context was in oil and gas. The person in oil and gas now gave his friend in banking the templates. Then the person in banking 
Now gave you his friend in advertising the templates. You, you are now in a, which sector? You are now in FinTech. You do now collect the templates. The underlying context that designed the original template is faulty. So what do you need to know? What are the problems? What are the prospects? What are the challenges? What are the solutions? What are the realities? What are the dimensions? What are your business goals and objectives? Use it to create your own template. If you now create your template, for example, you say, oh, me, look at my template, let me look at it. I will do that, it's easier. You have showed effort. But again, sometimes I will need to call you and discuss with you because I cannot use my own reality to determine the appropriateness of your template. I must be able to put myself in your shoes, in your business context, in your industry context, in your management con context, to be able to do the templates. Please, if you have templates, be the one that develops the template. You and your team work on the template. It can be part of your to-do list to develop a template for report writing, okay? Call your team members. What should be in the report? And that is the final point on this particular slide. Sometimes, you know, people will reach out to me to say, Oh, hear me, um, how can I improve my reporting? One of the things I told them is, who are you reporting to? Take your journal or your jotter or your iPad or your notepad, empty. You have asked that we submit a weekly report. What are the things you would like to see in that weekly report? That question can change everything. They will say, sometimes if you are not careful, I know some of the ND, they can look, depending on the time and their mood, they can say, ah, you are the HR professional. You should know what I want. Don't take that bit. Say, I understand. But what and what? There are some things I will give you, whether you ask for it or not. Like, what and what are you looking for? What do you expect? Now, if you submit a report to a management team, a C suit, let's say there are seven people. Meet all those seven people one by one. CFO, what kind of things do you want to be seeing from my HR report? Head of safety, what kind of things do you want to be seeing from my executive director? This, what kind of information do you want to? By the time you harvest their brains and you add your own, based on all the things we have shared today in this webinar, including the beautiful things our colleagues have shared in the chat message, I will still share. You will see what you'll be. You will come up with. You, you will shock them. You will shock. You you will really what? You will really shock them. Okay. So technically, I've come to the end of the training. I'll just show you quickly some templates. Again, don't forget that they were only useful in certain contexts. Don't use it to invalidate your own. And anytime from now. I would like to take, so if you have questions, you can begin to type them in the chat box. And if you prefer to raise your hand to ask the question, beautiful. And much more importantly, I will appreciate that some of my colleagues here um, share. I will try not to call anyone out, but if I don't see hands, I promise to call you out. Don't tell me you're in a noisy environment. <laughs> I won't buy that. If that won't be part of the report. I'm just joking. I'm just kidding anyway. So let's look at some templates. I'll be very fast. I don't want to show you different templates. So look at this. Very simple. See, ad count, uh, recruitment, training, recognition. You can see the serial number, the, the, the last ad count. Very simple. When the person joined, when the person is like, I'm moving on. I have many to show you. Okay, look at this one. This is what a friend of mine sent to me when I was trying to help her to improve her templates. I changed some things there, of course. So this is a real life template that you are looking at. Of course, you won't see the organization. In the person's weekly report, see last week expenses, cut food. So you can tell that this person is in charge of what? HR and admin. So you can't take this template now. You now go and put cut food in your own weekly report. The first question is, does your organization have a cut? So you can see here now, road, 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 road worthiness. You can see purchase of 400 liters of diesel. Payments for repairs done on Tacoma. Tacoma is a brand of vehicle. Now, look at on the top, staff reports, staff, staff spreads, uh, confirmed staff, unconfirmed staff. But 
there are no insights from this. It's just information. For example, these people that are unconfirmed, why are they not confirmed? Is it that they are not due for confirmation or they are due for confirmation and some things are stopping them? Do you, do you understand? We are moving. Projected expenses for the week. So this person is proactive. Is also trying to say this is what we will probably need for next week. Okay. And you can see hotel booking for the trainer. My question will be trainer for what? Which trainer? This person is assuming that everybody in the organization knows who the trainer is and the training they are talking about. This is under reporting. This person, for example, could have what? Mentioned the training, the norm, who are the targets of the training, what is the expected outcome of the training. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Flight booking for what? Visa processing. Look at this report now. So I'm trying to show you both the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I'm not showing you only good things so that I can rejig our memory and we can see what and what we can do. This person in this particular report has issues and what status. So issues, recruitment, senior graphic designer and marketer, status, sourcing, shortlisting, and interview is hungry. One challenge I have with this kind of report is there's no time frame, there's no deadline. It's just open ended. Look at this, bringing in an expatriate from Dubai to train technician on the machine usage. Status, concluded with expatriates. If we proceed to booking a swipe plane for this. A population of third quarter goal setting of staff reporting to you, still pending. We prompt him again. You can see how pedestrian some of these things are. A staff salary review letters, awaiting your review. This is a report to, I hope that person is not looking. And with the person, we know that only me and the person knows. Now, let's look at this particular template. Don't laugh. Oh. Uh, I think I, let me just quickly check. Ah, don't mention yourself. Oh. Don't mention yourself. You know, I didn't put your name there. And I didn't put your organization. Don't mention yourself. Oh. Me, I will give you credit. Because if not for you, I won't be doing this webinar. It just don't know me that let me invest time. That for you to be honest, to ask for help, many people need the help and they are not aware they need the help. Uh, let me see. Uh, la Leticia, why are you laughing now? Uh, my sister Loretta, why are you laughing now? Uh, I'm trying to check through our chat group. Okay, thank you for your. Okay, okay, fantastic. Anytime from now, I'm going to. Okay, maybe we should do this. Um, Ungazi, you said you are willing to share, right? Um, my co-admin, please help me watch out for Ngozi Bukola de Tumobi and enable her to speak, please. As co-admin, you should be able to do that. Enable her to speak. Taya Azan is asking for slight template again. Template again. Uh, let me see. Okay. Let me continue with the presentation. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Ade Bukola, can you speak? Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the privilege of learning from your wealth of experience. Good evening, everyone. It's good to be here. Okay, one thing I want to share. Um, our facilitator has done a load of work in helping and guiding us on how to generate reports and how to do report writing. But the area that I want to give everyone a charge is why the report generation? Why the report writing? This is tied to your HR strategy. As long as you understand the purpose, the game, the aim to do this, it will help drive your innovation, it will help you know, trigger your creativity. For instance, while the internet has a host of templates and uh, things you could copy or learn from or adapt or align to. The reason that makes you you is that inside of you, there's a huge untapped talent. And it is when problems come to you that you can begin to ask yourself, now that I have this problem, because HR professionals are meant to be solution providers, then you rethink and ask yourself, how do I present it to this uh, management? How do I present it to executive management? Within your inner strength, you can draw out the innovation and the creativity of how to do this, your report. You know the problem, then you can rethink. And like the facilitator said, when you're done writing and putting 
the issue, the, the, the suggested solutions, and then the proposal, as the case may be, on any area of your HR or any area of your work. Because I, I presume some people that are not even HRs might even be joining this uh, uh, lecture. So if you check through what you have put together, do well to ask a team member, a colleague to look at it and to critique. And it is good to take criticism from colleagues and friends. So the major point is to begin to challenge yourself on understanding the strategy of your business, then it will help to shape you in your reports, right? The report creation, report generation outcomes, because you're going to be infusing contents for the executive management to make critical decisions for the business because you are like an entrepreneur, but you're under the umbrella of an employee. However, the ownership approach must reside in you that if I'm saddled with this problem, how do I solve it? Wear that thinking cap, think deeply. Then when you can identify areas of how the solutions can be, always work with the five why, what, when, how, where, and whom, and all that. And it will help you to do your report writing. Thank you so much for this privilege. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Ngozi. That was spot on. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Ngozi. Okay, if you like to contribute, and you should contribute, absolutely, indicate in the chat box, raise your hands, we will um, enable you to make your contributions. Please don't deny us of what we help, help us progress in this our HR journey. That's why we are not doing this journey alone. Nobody is an island or a monopoly um, of, of, of knowledge. Now, this is another HR report, for example, that we are taking a look at quickly. You can see the report has what? Serial number, then the report, details, and then frequency. You can see here, yeah, the first item there is what? Medical utilization report. What are the details? Total number of enrollees on the HMO scheme, frequency of hospital utilization, top five chronic ailments and additional support, top five hospital visited, total premium paid, excluded service. Then you have what? CEO breakfast round table. What are the details? Highlights of the session, key action points from the session, implementation status. The top point, employee engagement survey. The part of the survey and the analysis, you can see, staff pain points, areas of improvement and commendation. Next, wellness and engagement initiatives included. Hepatitis B vaccination, International Women's Day, Men's Day. What are the details? Particip participation, feedback from participants, other measures to be put in place as a result of the initiative developed, okay? And so on and so forth. So you can see here, these are different kind of reports and the details of all the reports, induction, leave utilization. Uh, so look at this, leave utilization, total number of days planned, total number of days utilized, constraint on underutilization or overutilization. You can see uh, uh, highlights, disciplinary reports, attrition report, confirmation report, union meetings updates, educational advancement. These are, then the last report here is outsourcing report. 13 reports, just one organization. You can see, and there are things you can report on that is not reflecting here. Of course, there'll be things reflecting here you can't report on because it's not applicable to your organization. Look at this report now. You have the NPR, the performance area, the NPR, overtime and inconvenience allowance, okay? And so on and so forth. Look at the planned activities. Look at the expected outcomes. Look at the dependencies. Dependencies means who needs to provide input or support or collaborate with you. Then look at this, timeline. There are timelines. Look at this, status. So it's either it is completed or it is ongoing or otherwise. You can see. Now look at this particular report now. You will see that some of these reports are slightly uh, more robust than some of the reports we have been showing in the earlier form, but they are all important because every, all the reports are contributing to another. Look at this now. You have formal DC. A DC means disciplinary committee. You have an informal DC. What is the total DC? 17. They now break it down. Suspension, how many? Dismissal, how many? 
exoneration. I mean, exoneration means some people face the DC and they were innocent. Final written warning, how many? Termination, how many? You can see DC has reports. Okay, L look at this. This will interest you, especially in this jackpot generation. And let me say one or two things in one or two minutes here. This one is what? Q1 report on visa letters. So, you know, in some of our organizations, employees ask for what? Visa letter. For any reason. Look at this. In this particular one, where is the highest letter people are asking for? Can somebody type it in the chat box? Let me be sure that uh, I'm, I'm not alone. You know, for, for tonight, let me be a legal profile. I don't want to work in loop. Any HR person should not work in loop. You can see the highest number of what? Embassy letter was to which country? Uh -huh. uh, not be me talk amo. Now, you can see that in this particular instance, and this real life data you are looking at is Canada. That tells you that by the time people are asking you, for example, for letter of introduction to Canada, what is the next letter you will get? I want to know if you can draw insights. I want to know if somebody on this call can draw insights. So almost all these people that are asking for a letter from Canada, you know, in this particular organization, they will make a request and say, please give me a letter of rest. Um, I say resignation, don't mind me, slip of tongue. Give me a letter of what? Introduction to the Canadian embassy. Please, what is the next letter that we follow? Oh, God bless your labor God bless you, Chidima. God bless you, God bless you, Monisola. Now, you can now see that, you know, if you tell somebody that in your management meeting, be reporting request for visa letter. You know, if you are not careful, you can say, ah, uh -uh. no, for what? Why should you be reporting letter of, how is that important to the business? But can you see that it is important? Because most likely of the 24 people that ask for visa letter to Canada, 20 of them will go. So what will you now start doing? Once somebody is asking for a letter to go to Canada, that's their role, especially if it is critical. Should we check the succession planning? Is it in progress? Is there backup? Do you want to create a talent pipeline? Do you want to go and check people on LinkedIn that you even begin to interview offline? Do you understand? So that the time they now give you their resignation letter, you can collapse the time to few if you are going to recruit from outside. There is nothing in HR that is not interrelated with any other thing. Um, I was intentional in putting this, and this is real life data. Because that when I was saying that sometimes some of us, we trivialize some things. Please, nothing is trivial in HR. Nothing is trivial. Once you are saying, I used to work in an organization, the two highest months with turnover, highest turnover was September and January. September has the highest turnover. The second highest turnover month is January. Who can tell me why? Who can tell me why in the chat box? In that particular organization, the highest turnover month, every month, employee turnover was September. The second highest turnover period is January. No, it's not Jackpa. Tell me the purpose of the Jack. God bless you, Ade. Your head is there, chop knuckle, chop knuckle. It is cool. They're either going to Canada, going to UK. So what do we used to do? For September, once it is like uh, June, July, August, vacancy day, no day, certain roles, especially people that are, say, between the ages of maybe 25 and 35, what will we begin to do? We we'll begin to advertise the roles codedly. I'll begin to do interviews. We we'll begin to warm our pipeline. Why? When they are resigning, we are not sure. We already anticipate that, okay, 25 people will resign. What we may not know is which 25, and they will be watching. Once they begin to either ask for letter of recommendation, you know, letter of visa, those, those kind of things, they will begin to take their off. They want to go and do their IESTS. I don't know the name of that exam. You are now beginning to watch, to track them. Okay, let me see if time will permit me to take a few other examples. I'm intentionally showing these examples to bring more life to the, to the conversation because I know some of us, everything I've said didn't hear, but the example we, we you know, it will make your brain sharp, sharp, sharp. Now look at this, this is Q1 
exit reports. Exit means the number of staff that have what? Gone. A total of what? 46 exits were recorded between January and March. Look at the department. You can see information now. The highest exit was 14, representing 30%. Well, where are these exits from? Technica. This is an engineering company. Are, are you with me? And you can see, and so on and so forth. Now look at this, detailed analysis from what? Various departments. You can see the department, the analysis. Now, look at this, nature of exits, okay, and exits at job levels. So you are looking at, okay, the nature is it termination? Did we dismiss some people? Did some people resign? Were some people due for what retirement? Now look at jobs at what level? Is it senior management? Is it middle management? Is it junior management? Is it junior grade? Look at here yeah, now, the top three reasons to exit. I'm sure it will relate with some of our organizations. Career advancement, outcome of disciplinary areas, statutory requirements. Comments, aside the fact that a good number of persons resign for higher paying job, higher grade level, and the zeal to handle new challenge, a number of persons also quit their jobs in pursuance of greener pastures or relocation outside the country. Others were exited due to cases of what? Gross misconduct. So if you cannot tease out all these things, you will not be able to offer solutions. You can still see, just exit all. You've already seen three or four pages. Only exit, just exit. This is now, is it Instagram we call this now, of the exit, okay? And you continue to see different notes, different comments, and there are better ways of presenting all of this. Okay, you can see January, uh, exit, February exit, you can see, okay? We are not even comparing Q1 of one year with Q1 of another year. In this in situation now, we are also comparing what? Male and female. You can see that we have more, in this particular context, more male exits than female exits. We also need to find out why. Is it that male are more restless or women are a little more security conscious and less adventurous, you have to tease it out. The data may not make a meaning if you don't troubleshoot, okay? Look at this, the top uh, exit reason, career advancement as the top most reason for resignation. Information gathered from exit interviews conducted and feedback from verbal conversation revealed that aside the fact that people always jump at a job with a higher grade, some Exit were prompted by what uncertainty and not being fulfilled on the job. You can see insights. Now look at this. Maybe it's on this note. I will even stop my slide sharing and take questions, comments. Look at this recommendation. Look at this. If I'm not mistaken, this is about eight recommendations showing clear career paths should be put in place and communicated to staff. Professional career ladder should be developed. Develop a program where employees are open to job rotations as this will enrich their career. Learning point from disciplinary actions should be used as a tool to mitigate. Look at insights. Now, you can't copy and paste this because the situation here may not. So the question is, what is the situation in your organization? Tease it out and tease out the solution. You can't just be saying, uh, all about they share your templates with me. Will they work? Are we together? Okay, let me see. If uh, I can still show one or two more uh, slides that may be helpful, you can see here. Yeah? So this is from the HR help desk, for example. Okay, help desk here means all the phone calls to the HR dedicated line, all the emails to the HR in a particular month. So what is the nature of the email? Many of us, we get emails, we get calls, but like I said earlier, we don't document. So one thing is with respect to communication, 141 request was around what com uh, com compensation and benefits, nothing on confirmation, okay? One on email enlargement, one on employment, one general inquiry. 26 things are general, it's not easy to classify them. 38 was on HR performance management. One was on ID card displacement. 
you know, and so on and what, 98 were for medical reasons, okay? 90 was for what, records updates. You need to show some of these things. All the emails you get from staff, you can analyze it and do a report on it. There's nothing you can report on. Look, look at this now, tabular analysis of what? KPI measurement. Percentage ratio of trained and competent workforce. Target year to date and then month on month. Percentage of identified marginal and poor performance personnel pool. Percentage of identified company tenant performance personnel pool. Percentage of identified company average performance pool. Percentage of staff rates, new hire and replacements. Performance of conformance rating to company standards, blah, blah, blah. Percentage attrition rate of food employees, and so on and so forth. You can see, look at this. You can use, uh, what do you call it? I've shown you histogram or bar chart. You can see uh, like a, what do you call this um, graph now? Like, like line graph to show the, the trends of ratio of trained and competent workforce and all the other parameters. Graphical analysis of, of KPI management. Okay, when you do this thing, look at this, staff payroll record. This is even by gender, female to, to male, technical and office-based. Staff payroll record, you can see full-time employee by their age demography, between 19 to 26, 27 to 35, 36 to 54, 55 and above. You can see here, 68% of this particular organization are between 27 to what? 35 years. It will inform the kind of employee engagement programs you will do for them. Staff productivity measurement reports. Time of analysis, you can see. Rotation time of vacation days, maternity days, paternity leave, marriage leave, compassionate leave, leave of absence, study leave, paid time off, unpaid time off, visa processing, force major, unapproved absent days, suspension days, training days, statutory time off, all around just time off alone. Men and brethren, if we can think deep, our work is valuable. If we can think deep, there's value to unlock from what we do. Nobody here should say, oh, I, I don't have anything to report. Not anymore. Those days are banished forever. Okay? All right? The, 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 the list is what is endless. Thank you so much. Again, I am open and we are open because you can ask a question and someone else may answer on the call to, to, to questions so that uh, we can call it uh, a wrap. Thank you for thanking me. So questions, comments, or contributions, please. I can still spare five to ten more minutes. Okay, so while I'm waiting, I'll just drop the typical announcement I drop if I was not the one presenting. I didn't get anybody to help me tonight. But it's good, it's part of it. We enjoy what we do, and we thank everyone for their massive mammoth support. All my co-hosts for tonight, thank you so much. God bless you. I'm waiting if there will be any question, if there will be any contribution, if there will be any suggestion or feedback. So in case you are not following me yet, for reasons best known to you, in your own interest, please follow me. And in my interest too, please. Um, follow me. Thank you so much, Emmanuel Udo. It says from the training, I believe the month of May will be great. I, I believe so too. I, be, I believe so because increasingly we are unlocking more, more values. Yes, thank you so much. Adi says, yes, these letters are actually a true indication of exit. Yes, it's, it's a proxy. The, you know, we call it um, cause and effect. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Thank you so much, Oluchi. 
uh, Loretta. Loretta, my sister says, how does a timesheet look like? Um, I don't have a sample right now, but I can explain it. Okay, Loretta, a timesheet just accounts for every hour or every 30 minutes or every day. So just imagine now, let's imagine together, Loretta, let's imagine together. So you have eight days in a week. So in Excel sheet, you put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then you now have eight to nine, nine to 10, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to one, one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five. So you can have Monday, eight to nine, departmental meeting with the team. You fill it in that timesheet. You can now have nine to 11, interview of product category manager, two candidates. In 11, 11 to 12, you can now have review of all pending emails, 12 to one, break. One to three, development of KPIs for new staff, and you mentioned the new roles. Three to four, okay, review of disciplinary report from last week. Four to five, okay, you do development of JD for three new roles. That is a timesheet for Monday. So you feel it like that. And you can also get your the people report to you to fill. I've worked in places where that timesheet I described to you in Excel was actually digital. So you have to fill it. So what happens is that for next week, by Friday, you will populate your timesheet for next week. In other words, this is what you plan to do next week. You will fill it and submit it to your line manager. Your line manager can either approve it or request for a modification and say no. What you have put for next week is not sufficient. Then at the end of the week, you can you will now resubmit it to us like done or actual. Okay. Please don't be shy. Ask um, any question related to this uh, subject matter or um, anything I mentioned specifically during this conversation tonight. All right. So there's a question from Noye. Noye okay. Jennifer. Read the question for me, my brother, please. Okay, so she said, how can you how can you navigate providing info when your management can't when your management don't want to share some financial information that can help your analysis? How can you navigate providing information when your management don't want to share some financial information that can help you? with your analysis. Okay, uh, th thank, thank you so much. Uh, that's, a, that's not an uncommon situation in either one-man businesses or, you know, if you work, for example, in a company that is a PLC, you may not necessarily have that problem because statute really due to SEC regulations, they need to disclose certain figures. So if you take, certain companies, for example, that are PLC, all those banks, you can just go online and search, search for their AGM report of last year. You will see the number of staff. You will see the total emolument paid to staff. There's nothing to hide. So what you need to do, first and foremost, Noye, is based on the information you already have, leave what you don't have first. Try and create compelling reports based on what you have. As part of your report, you will now say, oh, maybe concern that I will have even been able to provide better insights if I'm able to get so-so information from finance or from production or from blah, blah, blah. That's one way to go. Another way to go is go and meet the person in charge and discuss. Don't just say, give me this. Explain what you are doing and say, based on this, 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 if I have this information to help me with this analysis, engage with them, look for who is um, sympathetic 
in the management or in the executive or in the ownership team. Um, my final comment will say, if in the long term, it is not possible, you may also need to work your internal or external DAPA. Okay, again, because um, one of the qualities of a good place to work is transparency to a large extent. If the thing is not like a trademark secret, if they don't trust, if the reason they are giving is because they don't trust you, then you should go to an organization that trusts you, or they too should hire somebody they can they, they can trust. I hope I've been slightly um, helpful. Thank you so much, Olabody. Any other question or comments I might have missed out? Okay, I think we are good to to go. So no if there are no, no comments or no questions. Does anybody want to do closing remarks for us? I don't want to close this session. Anyone? So let me call my friend, Leticia, if she will speak. Leticia, closing remarks, please, if you oblige us. I'm trying to, I'm asking you to unmute. In fact, let me make you co host. Okay. Well, um, yeah, you've unmuted me. Thank you so much, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, that was um, super insightful, and I'm grateful. Um, I'm very glad that I'm part of this meeting. So about this HR um, reporting, honestly, I'm one of those that struggle with it, not because um, I do not have content, but uh, because of um, lack of, um, would I say team members now? So I just have a couple of people that work with me, but um, they are also saddled with other responsibilities. So more like um, support team members. So um, technically, or I would say I'm just the only HR and um, we oversee a couple of businesses at the same time. So it's a bit challenging for me. Probably the reason why um, I don't like it, but I do it. So I, I do a lot of reporting all the way. So one of the things um, that stood out for me that you mentioned is um, you know, having that work plan on a weekly basis and always documenting all of your activities that I am good with. And that helps me also to you know, generate content for my reporting. So I want to say thank you so much for this um, session. So on behalf of everyone, um, in this call tonight. I want to say thank you for joining. And of course, from the chat session, no doubt that um, you have uh, not learned anything. I know that you have. And um, this section, like someone said, the month of May is going to be um, interesting. That I wish for everyone. And I'm also looking forward to um, upgrading my reporting from this session. So thank you very much, sir. I appreciate.